What's going on JK fam? Johnny here and today I'm going to show you guys how to take pictures of the Northern Lights. So contrary to popular belief, you really don't need that good of a camera. The camera that I used is a Nikon Z7 and I used a Tokina 11-16. So for you who know camera equipment, yes it's a fancier camera. However, you can actually use these settings and tips and tricks on your phone. Biggest thing is understand how to use pro mode or manual mode, whatever kind of phone you have, and then tweak the settings accordingly. So I did a long exposure shot. For you guys who aren't photographers, a long exposure shot just means you leave your shutter open for a select amount of time longer than just pressing it. So for example, I did mine at 20 seconds. I put my aperture at f2.8 and then my ISO at 400. So you adjust these settings accordingly. It's kind of a trifecta. The shutter speed is how fast your shutter opens and closes. So like I said, it's 20 seconds. The aperture is how big the eye of your lens is. So it's actually reversed. The bigger the number, the smaller the eye, and then the smaller the number, the bigger the eye. So ideally you want to have a lower f-stop. My lens only goes to 2.8, and that gives you the biggest eye for your lens. And then finally, ISO is like an electronic brightener for your camera. Whether it be your phone, DSLR, mirrorless, ISO will help right now. Something you want to be wary of is the higher your ISO, the more grain you're introducing to your image. So what that means is do your shutter speed first or aperture first, whichever one of those two, and then use your ISO. You want to do ISO last because if you crank the number crazy high, like 6400 and higher for lower end cameras, you're just going to start to get a lot of grain. If you get a nicer camera like this Nikon Z7, those type of things will handle better ISO settings. Your phone might not though. So mess with those settings and see what works best for you. So a couple tips and tricks that I want to pass on to you guys is one, have a tripod or prop your camera onto something. Because what happens is any type of little movement will cause aberrations or it will cause a little bit of distortion in your image. So one, have a tripod and then two, set a timer. If you don't have one of those wireless remote shutters, go ahead and set a two second timer. That's what I did for my camera. You click it, it blinks for two seconds and then snags the image. This just ensures that when you click it with your finger, it doesn't move the camera on your tripod at all. And then three, I would highly suggest monitoring the Aurora app. That's the app that I use. It shows you relative KP indexes as well as cloud coverage. And just like any weather forecast, it's never 100%, but it gives you a likelihood of when the lights are gonna be out. So when we're out there, it's at around a 40% chance of seeing the lights, we had a 100% clear sky. So those images that you saw were ideal conditions for it. So like I said, make sure to check that app. It's not the only app out there, there's other ones. That's just the one I found very useful for myself. And then finally, when taking pictures of the lights, make sure your composition is good. I've taken pictures of lights before, but I just point it straight at the sky, take a picture, and then it looks really blank. Right, but as you see from these images, there's a bit of foreground before you see the lights. It just gives your audience or the people looking at it a relative feel of where the lights are in the sky and how big they really are in comparison to familiar objects. But that's pretty much it from our little tips and tricks video. Like I said, these settings, the 20 second shutter speed, 2.8 f-stop, and the 400 ISO, they're all relative to what my conditions were in my camera. Feel free to tweak those with yours and let me know if you guys have any questions. Hope you guys learned something from it and let me know what you guys want to see next. 